In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural frosted ice material. And if you'd like to purchase this procedural material, you can get it with the links in the video description, or you can watch the tutorial and learn how to create it yourself. And in this tutorial, I'll show you how to join the material together into this custom node group so you can customize the look of the material. So I'm just gonna go over the material settings. So I have the overall scale value, which is gonna change the size of the entire material. So you can change that depending on the size of your object. And then I have two different colors for the frosted ice. So we have color one and color two. So you can kind of change these colors. I have kind of like more of a white blue and then more of a saturated blue. But you can, of course, make it more like a like an aqua blue or a greenish blue. You can really change the colors a lot to get different looking ice. Then we have two different roughness values. So you can see there's roughness value one and then there's roughness value two. So you can either like turn them both down to get kind of a cool look like a dark blue. You could also turn them both up and you can see the material looks quite rough and like super frosted. It almost looks like it has like maybe a thick layer of like ice or snow over the top of it. Then there's the transmission value, and that's like the transparency to make it actually look like ice. Then there's the IOR value, and so you can change the IOR depending on like the temperature of water. So if it's like very cold and frozen, the IOR value is gonna be different. You can like turn it up and turn it down. So you can see if I turn it down, it's a little bit more see-through. It almost looks a bit more like water. And if you turn it up, it's gonna be not quite as see-through and it looks a little bit more icy. Then there is the noise scale. There's also the detail the noise. So if you turn the detail down, it looks a little bit more stylized. And then there also is the noise roughness, which is like more detail. Then there's some displacement settings. So there's the displacement scale. You can especially see it there on the top reflections. And then there's the displacement detail. So you can turn it way up if you want a lot of detail, but I like keeping it down so it's a little bit more lumpy. And then the roughness, the displacement roughness, and that's just kind of like the noise roughness. And then there's also the displacement strength. So you can use this to pop out the mesh and look, make it look more bumpy. So if you'd like to purchase this procedural material, you can get it with the links in the description. You can also check out my ultimate Blender procedural material pack if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials. Now I've also just released this procedural snow and ice material pack. So if you'd like a procedural material pack with lots of different snow and ice materials, then definitely check out that material pack with the links in the description. And to learn how to create more procedural materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. And I did also want to mention that I do have a regular ice material, so it's kind of like a classic ice cube material. If you're interested in checking out that video, I'll also have the link to that in the description. So before we start creating the material, I'll show you what I have set up in the 3D viewport if you want to set up the blend file the same way that I have. So I went to the add menu and I added a cube because I thought it would be cool to add this to like a kind of an ice cube shape. I went to edit mode and I hit control B for a bevel and I scroll my mouse wheel to make a few different cuts in the bevel. Then I can hit control R for a loop cut and I can type in 10 and then left click and right click and I'll do that on this side so control R type in 10 and then left click and right click control R 10 left click and right click and so I'm basically just kind of like subdividing it and why I'm doing that is so that the displacements have more geometry because I'm going to be using a little bit of displacements to pop out the mesh and then I'll shade the object smooth and I'll move it over here then I also thought it'd be cool just to add like a complex object with different interesting shapes so I added a monkey head for that and I'll hit control 3 to add a subsurf with three levels and I will just shade the object smooth then I'll select both objects and I'll scale them down to a point two, and then hit control a and just apply the object scale because the default objects in Blender, the default size is pretty large. And I'm also going to scale this a little bit more down and then hit control A and just apply the scale. So then I just kind of rotate the objects and kind of pose them here in the scene. And then I also added a camera and just pointed the camera at the objects. And also if you go to the camera settings, if you select the camera, I turn the focal length up to 80 because it kind of just like zooms the camera in a bit and make things look a bit more flat. And I like that better. Now for the lighting, I added this area light right here. So just a single area light and I turn the power to five. I just have it as a white color and I turn the shape here to a rectangle and then stretched it way out. And this gives some nice lighting, which is going to shine through the objects. And then as for the world lighting, if you go over here to the world properties, I use the easy HDRI add-on to add in this HDRI here from Polyhaven. So if you want to download it, the link is in the video description and I just downloaded the 1K version, but you don't have to use the easy HDRI add-on. If I just add like a new world here, if I just go to the surface here, you can click on the yellow dot next to color and change it to environment texture, and then just click on the open button and open up the HDRI, which I have linked in the video description if you want to use the same exact lighting. And I downloaded the 
1K HDR version on Polyhaven. Now I did also want to make the background transparent just so that it's not as distracting. So I like to go here to the film tab. This is under the render properties and you can just turn on the transparent button. And then also if you go down here to the color management, I use the view transform of filmic and I set the look to very high contrast. So I'm just going to close the side panel here and I'm in the shading workspace. So I have the 3D viewport right over here and I'm in the rendered viewport mode and I am doing this tutorial in cycles. It will look a bit different if you're in Eevee. So if you want to get the same exact result, then definitely use cycles. So here's the shader editor. So I'm just going to click on new to add a new material and I can just call this frosted ice. So to make this material, I'm going to first start with the principal shader. And what I'm going to do is turn the base color to kind of this light bluish color. And if you want to use the same exact hex code to use the same exact color I'm using, you can punch in this hex code. Then I'm going to turn the roughness all the way up to one. So it's a pretty rough material, but then I'm going to open up the transmission and turn the transmission all the way up to one. So you can kind of see through it. So it kind of looks like a, like a frosted glass. You can see it. If I turn the roughness down now, it looks a lot more like glass, but I'm turning the roughness all the way up to one. So you can't see through it too much. Then I'm going to duplicate this material. So hit shift D to duplicate the shader here. And we're going to create a different shader right here. So just control shift, select the principal shader. And for this one, I'm going to turn the roughness way down to like 8.2, but I'll keep the transmission up. But then for the color, I'm going to make it this stronger blue color. And if you want to use the same exact hex code, you can punch in this hex value right here. So now you can see we have more of like a super white rough material. And then we have more of like a shiny blue, almost like a water material. So we have these two principal shaders, but I want to mix them together. So I can just search for the mix shader. So add the mix shader, drop it right here, and I'll plug this one into the top shader. And then this one here, I'll plug into the bottom shader. So now we're evenly mixing between them. And you can see I can change the factor to make it more of one or more of the other. But what I want to do is add a noise texture as a mask so that like some parts here and there are one shader and some parts are the other shader. So I'm going to search for a noise texture. Let's drop it here. And then you can enable the Node Wrangler add-on in Blender's user preferences. And once you enable the Node Wrangler, if you select the noise texture, you can hit control T and that is going to add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. And I'm going to use the object coordinate. So I'll put the object into the vector and let's drag the mapping nodes right down here and I'll put the noise texture right up here. So now I can control shift, select the noise texture, to preview it. And let me just turn the scale down so you can see the noise texture better. So why I'm using the object coordinates is because the generate coordinates can sometimes look a bit stretched. You can see it does look slightly stretched. It definitely looks worse on some other objects but the object coordinates, if I put the object into the vector, that very evenly places the procedural texture on the object. So that's why I'm using object coordinates. So now what I want to do is change the noise settings. So I'll turn the scale to 15 and I'll turn the detail up to 10 and then I'll turn the roughness up to a 0.8. So it's also pretty detailed. So now what I can do is put the factor into the factor here, the mix, and I can control shift, select the mix shader to preview it. So now you can see if you look up closely, there's kind of a noisy pattern where it's either one shader or the other shader, but I want to change the colors a bit to kind of change how it looks. So I'm going to search for a color ramp. So if you just type in ramp, it'll be the top one. So color ramp, and I'll drop it here after the noise. And then what I can do is drag the white tab over and that's going to make it be more of that dark blue. So I like that a bit better. So I'm going to drag the blue tab or the white tab kind of to about there. So there's a little bit more of that bluish color. So that's really starting to look pretty cool. But then also what I'm going to do is search for RGB curves. I'm going to add the RGB curves and drop it here after the color ramp. And I'm going to click in the middle to add a dot. And then I'm going to click on this dot, which is way up here in the corner on the top. And I'm going to drag it all the way down. And then I'll take this tab and just drag it up a bit higher just like that. So that's just changing how the color looks. If I control shift, select the color ramp and then the RGB curves, you can kind of see what it's doing. So that's changing the colors a bit. And so we have a pretty cool kind of like frosted ice look. Now the material is almost finished, but I do want to add a little bit of displacement just to make the surface a bit bumpy and kind of pop out the mesh. So I'm going to search for a noise texture drop it here, and then I can plug the same mapping vector into the vector the noise, and let's just preview the noise, and I'm going to turn the scale to 10, and I'm going to turn the detail just up a little bit to 3. I don't want to turn the detail too much up, because if I turn the detail to 15, it's just going to look way too much detail, and I'm going to put the detail just to 3, so it looks a little bit more blobby. So you can kind of see the white and dark spots are a bit more blobby instead of being super detailed. 
So now what I want to do is search for a displacement node because we need to convert the black and white data into displacement data that the shader can use. So I'm going to put the displacement into the displacement here, the material output, and then I'm going to put the noise factor into the height value. And let's now control shift select the mix shader. So now if I zoom out here, if you look here on like the top of this cube here, you can see it is making kind of that bump there, but it's not actually popping out the mesh. That is because we need to open up the side panel and go here to the material properties, and we need to open up the settings and go to surface. And on the displacement, we want to change the bump only to displacement and bump. So this is telling the material that it can use the displacements. So now you can see it just is looking a little bit bumpy. If I turn this up more and more, you can see it's looking more and more bumpy, but I'm just actually going to leave it as the default of a 0.01 because I think that's pretty good because I don't want the ice to be too bumpy I just want it to be slightly bumpy on the edges But of course we'll add this as a custom value which you can control if you want it to be more bumpy So that's the procedural material So it's a pretty easy material But I'm now going to show you how to join it together into a custom node group so you can control the material a bit better So what I'm going to do is box select all the nodes except the material output and I'll hit Control G to join it together into a node group I'll hit the tab key to outside the node group and I'll drag the node group over here and let's make it bigger. And I'm going to copy the material name and I'm going to paste it here into the node group name so it's called Frosted Ice. So now with the node group selected, you can hit the tab key to go in and out of the node group. And then right over here, we have the group input so we can plug up all the custom values of the group input and then we'll be able to control those values outside of the node group. So this mapping is plugged up to all the different textures here, so these noise textures. So the scale value is going to change the size of the entire material. So I'll put the scale into the group input here, and let's hit the N key to open up the side panel. And I want to click on the scale, and you can see this is going to be three values, but I just want to make it one value. So what we're going to do is take the type here, and we're going to change it to float, so it's one value. Then I want to turn the default value to one, but you can see the texture has disappeared. That's because I need to go outside the node group, and I need to turn the scale just to one. So now I can go back into the node group. Now I also want to add the colors, so let's drag the group input right over here, and I can put the base color from this one into the extra socket, and then the base color for this one into the extra socket, and I'm going to double click on these to rename them here on the group sockets, and I'm just going to call this one color one, and then this one I'm going to call color two. Then I want to control the roughness values, so we have two different roughness values, so I'll put this one into the extra socket, and then this one into the extra socket, and I'll call this roughness one, and roughness too. Then I'm going to control the transmission for both of them. So I'm going to take this transmission weight and put that into the extra socket. And then this transmission weight, you could put it into another socket if you want to control it individually, but I'm going to put it into the same transmission weight. And that way this single value will control both of them. And then you can double click on this to rename it and you could call it like transparency or alpha. I'm just going to call it transmission. And then I also want to do the same thing for the IOR value. So I'll put the IOR into the extra socket and then I'll put this IOR into the same exact socket. And you could call it IOR value or whatever you want to do. I'll just leave it as IOR. So then what I want to do is control some of the noise settings. So I'll drag the group input up here and I'm going to put the scale and the detail and the roughness into the extra sockets here. And then I just want to add the word noise at the beginning. So I'm going to call it noise scale. I will copy the noise. So hit control C to copy that. Click here and I'll hit control V to paste that and then control V to paste that. So we have noise scale, noise detail and noise rough. And then something else which I just realized, which I totally forgot to add, but this would be a great value, is to be able to blend between using this shader or this shader. So what I'm going to do is search for a hue saturation value, and I'm going to put this after the RGB curves. So we now have this value here, which if I turn it up and down, that's going to make it lighter and darker. So the black and white values are determining which shader it's using. So I can put this value into the extra socket. So I'll just stick it right there, and I'm going to call this shader blend. Shader blend, and I can click on the shader blend and drag it right up here after the scale. So if I hit tab to go outside the node group, you can see we now have the shader blend value so I can drag between using more of that white one or using more of the dark one. And then the last values that I want to add is the noise texture here, which is going into the displacement and the strength of the displacement. So I'm going to put the scale and the detail and the roughness into the extra sockets. And then also this displacement scale, I'm going to put that to the extra socket. So let's open up the side panel and we can scroll down and rename all of these. So what I'm going to do is just call this displacement. And then I'm going to select all of this and hit control C to copy it. And then I'll paste it here. So we have displacement scale, displacement detail, displacement roughness. And then this here, instead of calling it scale, I'm going to call it displacement strength. 
So I can hit the N key to close the side panel. I'll just drag the group input back over here and hit the tab key to go outside the node group. And there we go, we now have the final material with that extra added value. So I'll just review the material to make sure it's working. So we have the scale. We also have the shader blend, so you can use more of the whiter color or more of the bluish color. And then you can customize the color here. So you could really create some cool stylized materials with this, like maybe a green and red, or you could maybe make like a, like a purple and blue. You can definitely get some really cool looking materials with this. Or if you want to go for maybe more of like a realistic ice, you know, ice really doesn't have a color. It's just transparent. So you could make it more of like a white color. I'm going to hit the backspace with my mouse hovered over those values. And that's going to bring it back to the default values. Then we have the roughness of the materials. So you can make it more rough and more shiny. And you can get some cool looks just by changing both of these roughness values and adding some different variations and trying some different values. Then we have the transmission if you don't want to be able to see through it. And then we have the eye IOR value. So if you turn it down, it almost looks more like water, but if you turn it up, it definitely looks more icy and you can't really see through it as well. Then we have the noise scale and the detail and the roughness. And then we have some displacement settings like the scale and the detail also the roughness, which is also kind of like another detail value. And so you can kind of see that right up there. So if I turn up the detail, it looks super detailed now and noisy, but I don't really like that. I like keeping it at three, so it just is a bit more lumpy. And then finally, we have the displacement strength to pop out the mesh. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you find this material useful and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to purchase this procedural material, you can get it with the links in the description on my Gumroad store and Patreon page. You can also check out my ultimate Blender procedural material pack if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials. And I've also just released this procedural snow and ice material pack, which comes with these different 10 materials. So if you're interested in purchasing, links are in the description if you want to purchase that material pack. And to learn how to create more procedural materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.